neck braces in motocross. I know it's a hot topic whether they actually work or not, or do they cause you more injuries through damage to your collarbone or so on. And I had, was listening to the Pulp MX show during the week, and I had a guy on called Ryan McClintock, who's after doing a study of um, off-road riders who were wearing a neck brace versus not wearing a neck brace and the types of injuries that occurred. And in this video, I'm just going to go through it and you can see some of the facts around it and make a decision for yourself as to whether neck braces are worth it or not. So just a disclaimer before we start out here, basically I'm saying that uh, uh, the results are obtained by Action Sports EMS and they don't represent the brands or the neck brace companies that are shown in this video, which are given by way of example only. And before MX has nothing to do with Action Sports either, so we can't uh, say you know, uh, we can't give responsibility for the accuracy of the results recorded uh, by Action Sports EMS. Uh, so the presentation is compiled from their study, Neck Brace Effectiveness Case Study by Great Lakes, and it was published in 2018. And I myself have done the uh, review here for Before MX. So it was done between January 2009 to October 2018, so nearly over 10 years, and there was nine, nearly 9,500 patients in total, and 8,500 of those were asked if they were wearing a neck brace or not. So 4,700 were not wearing a neck brace, and 3,800 were wearing a neck brace. So it's a good sample size of data to work with. A little bit about Action Sports EMS then, they're an ambulance service that caters to amateur motocross in five of the USA states and they were founded in 2008 in Northern Wisconsin. Uh, they cover events like the Loretta Lynn's Amateur Qualifiers and they support the AMA directly uh, accommodating over a thousand riders in a single race weekend. So they, they know their stuff when it comes to looking after motocross or off-road riders. We're all familiar with the different types of neck brace that are out in the marketplace and this study doesn't call out exactly what type of neck brace each of the riders was wearing when the accident happened or if it was a foam roll versus a neck brace. So I'm going to put in the assumption here that most riders were wearing uh, these types of neck brace here with the, the support that sits against the shoulders and the spine and sternum and, and, and front and back and so on. And we're going to get into it then. So the first thing is a bit grim. It's about the number of deaths that occurred for people for riders without a neck brace as well as with a neck brace. So it's four with a neck brace and one without a neck brace. And in the uh, Pulp MX podcast that I was listening to, a show number 376, Ryan McClintock, the guy who put together this study, he speaks about the death that occurred with the neck brace at 2 minutes 24 in that show. And basically he says that uh, the guy who died wearing a neck brace, he actually had a spinal fusion done before from a previous injury uh, and that there was blunt force trauma from the bike directly to that part of his neck again. So, you know, you can make your own decisions then as to how much neck brace is actually going to do from in that situation. But the whole discussion about this report begins at two hours and eight minutes on that Pulp MX show number 376 if you want to listen to it to yourself. But you can see, you know, it's four times higher you know, a small sample size, but four times more deaths without a neck brace then versus with a neck brace. So a non-critical cervical spine injury then, so a non-critical neck pain. Uh, so it's a, a non-critical injury is a stinger, neck pain, decreased range of motion. They're assessed in the ambulance and uh, they're released then. And the cervical spine then is this C1 to C7, so this area of the neck here. And you can see it's nearly 15% versus 3% without a neck brace versus with a neck brace. So a, a significant um, difference there between the results for a non-critical injury and then for a critical cervical spine injury so I'm assuming this is where they've broken a bone in their neck or you know it's it's a serious situation so it's 5.1% versus 0.7% without a neck brace to with a neck brace again it's a big drop if you're if you're wearing a neck brace compared to not wearing a neck brace and the final one then is on collarbone fractures and I, you know, this is probably the most common one you hear is that a neck brace will break your collarbone and from the results here we can see that there is um, less fractures to the collarbone with a neck brace than versus without, albeit not as big a difference as you see in the neck injuries. Uh, so for without neck brace it's what 9.5% versus you know 7.5% something like that versus without a neck brace and with a neck brace. So that's kind of an overview of what was shown in the study. Um, if you want, you can have a read of it yourself and it's up to you then to decide if you think neck braces are worth it or not. But I'd like to hear what you think, if they, if riders should wear them, if they shouldn't wear them and why that is. If you wear one yourself, um, you know, if you buy one for your son or daughter, uh, just let me know what you think and we can have a bit of a discussion about it um, and, and see what the consensus is out there. I hope you enjoyed the review and you're a little bit more informed than you were before.